Eric Erickson, Wikipedia Audio Eric Smith Erickson was a German-American developmental psychologist and psychoanalyst known for his theory on psychological development of human beings. He may be most famous for coining the phrase identity crisis. His son, Kai T. Erickson, is a noted American sociologist. Despite lacking a bachelor's degree, Erickson served as a professor at prominent institutions, including Harvard and Yale. A Review of General Psychology Survey, published in 2002, ranked Erickson as the 12th most cited psychologist of the 20th century. Erickson's mother, Carla Abrahamson, came from a prominent Jewish family in Copenhagen, Denmark. She was married to Jewish stockbroker Valdemar Isidore Salomonson, but had been estranged from him for several months at the time Eric was conceived. Little is known about Eric's biological father except that he was a non-Jewish Dane. On discovering her pregnancy, Carla fled to Frankfurt am Main in Germany where Eric was born on June 15, 1902 and was given the surname Salomonson. Early life Following Eric's birth, Carla trained to be a nurse and moved to Karlsruhe. In 1905 she married Eric's Jewish pediatrician, Theodore Homburger. In 1908, Eric Salomonson's name was changed to Eric Homburger, and in 1911 Eric was officially adopted by his stepfather. The development of identity seems to have been one of Erickson's greatest concerns in his own life as well as in his theory. As an older adult, he wrote about his adolescent identity confusion in his European days. My identity confusion, he wrote the borderline between neurosis and adolescent psychosis. Erickson's daughter writes that her father's real psychoanalytic identity was not established until he replaced his stepfather's surname with a name of his own invention. During his childhood and early adulthood he was known as Eric Homburger, and his parents kept the details of his birth a secret. He was a tall, blonde, blue-eyed boy who was raised in the Jewish religion. At Temple School, the kids teased him for being Nordic, at grammar school, they teased him for being Jewish. At Das Humanistisk Gymnasium his main interests were art, history, and languages, but he lacked interest in school and graduated without academic distinction. After graduation, instead of attending medical school, as his stepfather had desired, he attended art school in Munich but soon dropped out. Uncertain about his vocation and his fit in society, Erickson began a lengthy period of roaming about Germany and Italy as a wandering artist with his childhood friend Peter Bloss and others. During this period he continued to contend with questions about his father and competing ideas of ethnic, religious, and national identity. When Erickson was 25, his friend Peter Bloss invited him to Vienna to tutor art at the small Berlingame Rosenfeld School for children whose affluent parents were undergoing psychoanalysis by Sigmund Freud's daughter, Anna Freud. Anna noticed Erickson's sensitivity to children at the school and encouraged him to study psychoanalysis at the Vienna Psychoanalytic Institute where prominent analysts August Eichhorn, Heinz Hartmann, and Paul Federn were among those who supervised his theoretical studies. He specialized in child analysis and underwent a training analysis with Anna Freud. Helene Deutsch and Edward Bibring supervised his initial treatment of an adult. Simultaneously he studied the Montessori method of education, which focused on child development and sexual stages. In 1933 he received his diploma from the Vienna Psychoanalytic Institute. This and his Montessori diploma were to be Erickson's only earned academic credentials for his life's work. 
psychoanalytic experience and training. In 1930 Erickson married Joan Moat Sersen, a Canadian dancer and artist whom Erickson had met at a dress ball. During their marriage Erickson converted to Christianity. In 1933, with Adolf Hitler's rise to power in Germany, the burning of Freud's books in Berlin and the potential Nazi threat to Austria, the family left an impoverished Vienna with their two young sons and emigrated to Copenhagen. Unable to regain Danish citizenship because of residence requirements, the family left for the United States, where citizenship would not be an issue. In the United States, Erickson became the first child psychoanalyst in Boston and held positions at Massachusetts General Hospital, the Judge Baker Guidance Center, and at Harvard Medical School and Psychological Clinic, establishing a singular reputation as a clinician. In 1936, Erickson left Harvard and joined the staff at Yale University where he worked at the Institute of Social Relations and taught at the medical school. While at Yale he became a naturalized citizen of the United States and changed his family's surname from his adoptive father's name of Homburger to Erickson, while adopting the middle initial H for Homburger. Erickson continued to deepen his interest in areas beyond psychoanalysis and to explore connections between psychology and anthropology. He made important contacts with anthropologists such as Margaret Mead, Gregory Battison, and Ruth Benedict, and these contacts, in turn, led to an excursion in 1938, which was to prove significant in the development of his thinking he was invited to observe the education of native Sioux children on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. In 1939 he left Yale, and the Ericsons moved to California, where Eric had been invited to join a team engaged in a longitudinal study of child development for the University of California at Berkeley S. Institute of Child Welfare. In addition, in San Francisco he opened a private practice in child psychoanalysis. While in California he was able to make his second study of American Indian children when he joined anthropologist Alfred Krober on a field trip to Northern California to study the Yurok. United States Theories of Development and the Ego In 1950, after publishing the book, Childhood and Society, for which he is best known, Erickson left the University of California when California's Levering Act required professors there to sign loyalty oaths. From 1951 to 1960 he worked and taught at the Austin Riggs Center, a prominent psychiatric treatment facility in Stockbridge, Massachusetts where he worked with emotionally troubled young people. During this time he also served as a visiting professor at the University of Pittsburgh where he worked with Benjamin Spock and Fred Rogers at Arsenal Nursery School of the Western Psychiatric Institute. Erickson's Theory of Personality Personal Life Bibliography Major Works collections. He returned to Harvard in the 1960s as a professor of human development and remained there until his retirement in 1970. In 1973 the National Endowment for the Humanities selected Erickson for the Jefferson Lecture, the United States' highest honor for achievement in the humanities. Erickson's lecture was titled Dimensions of a New Identity. Erickson is also credited with being one of the originators of ego psychology, which stressed the role of the ego as being more than a servant of the ID. According to Erickson, the environment in which a child lived was crucial to providing growth, adjustment, a source of self-awareness and identity. Erickson won a Pulitzer Prize and a U.S. National Book Award in Category Philosophy and Religion for Gandhi's Truth, 
which focused more on his theory as applied to later phases in the life cycle. In Erickson's discussion of development, rarely did he mention a stage of development by age but in fact did refer to a prolonged adolescence which has led to further investigation into a period of development between adolescence and young adulthood called emerging adulthood. Favorable outcomes of each stage are sometimes known as virtues, a term used in the context of Erickson's work as it is applied to medicine, meaning potencies. Erickson's research suggests that each individual must learn how to hold both extremes of each specific life stage challenge in tension with one another, not rejecting one end of the tension or the other. Only when both extremes in a life stage challenge are understood and accepted as both required and useful, can the optimal virtue for that stage surface. Thus, trust and mistrust must both be understood and accepted, in order for realistic hope to emerge as a viable solution at the first stage. Similarly, integrity and despair must both be understood and embraced in order for actionable wisdom to emerge as a viable solution at the last stage. The Erickson Life Stage Virtue, in order of the eight stages in which they may be acquired, are On Ego Identity versus Role Confusion Ego identity enables each person to have a sense of individuality, or as Erickson would say, ego identity, then, in its subjective aspect, is the awareness of the fact that there is a self-sameness and continuity to the ego's synthesizing methods and a continuity of one's meaning for others. Role confusion, however, is, according to Barbara Engler, the inability to conceive of oneself as a productive member of one's own society. This inability to conceive of oneself as a productive member is a great danger, it can occur during adolescence, when looking for an occupation. Erickson married Canadian-born American psychologist Joan Erickson in 1930 and they remained together until his death. Their daughter, Sue Erickson Bloland, an integrative psychotherapist and psychoanalyst, described her father as plagued by lifelong feelings of personal inadequacy. He thought that by combining resources with his wife, he could achieve the recognition that might produce a feeling of adequacy. The Ericsons had five children, the eldest of whom is the sociologist Kai T. Erickson. Erickson died on May 12, 1994 in Harwich, Massachusetts. He and his wife are buried in the First Congregational Church Cemetery in Harwich. Citations Works cited